Welcome back to On The Clock right here on the Forward Progress YouTube channel. I'm Rob Pizzola, and today I am drafting for the Buffalo Bills. Now, this isn't a mock draft based on what I think the Bills are going to do on draft night. This is what I would do if I was in the Buffalo Bills situation and I could make the draft picks as their general manager. Before we get into it, let's get the elephant out of the room here. The Bills wide receiver room is in shambles after they traded Stephon Diggs. Does that mean they need to draft a wide receiver in the first round? No, it absolutely does not. There's lots of options available to them this offseason. They can still trade for someone like T. Higgins or Brandon Ayuk. They could sign DJ Chark as just a holdover for one year to get them through, or they could draft a wide receiver. But am I going to go and reach so that Buffalo can get that number one? I'm not going to do that and pay solid draft assets to do so. So that's how the draft is going to go. We'll open it up here on Pro Football Focus. The Bills picking at number 28. We're drafting the first three rounds, and we're going to enter the draft room here. Now, again, Buffalo has not only issues at wide receiver, but safety. They lost both starting safeties in the offseason. That's a positional need for them. They lost their center, Mitch Morse, in the offseason as well, so they could use an interior lineman possibly help on the D-line in the linebacking core. There's lots of options here for what we can do with Buffalo. And yes, Josh Allen needs that number one again. He's got two small receivers, but maybe we target a bigger receiver later on, someone that might be able to win on the outside. So we'll run this draft a little bit slower just to see if one of the wide receivers drops in the early going here. Because if we do get something crazy that happens where one of our top wide receivers that's expected to go top 10 starts to fall. Maybe we jump in at that point, but for now we'll let it go and we'll see how things go in the early going here. Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, Drake may, and there's neighbors off the board. I know Dunze. So likely not going to happen. We'll speed up this selection here and we'll go down all the way to our pick at number 28 and decide what we're going to do with the Buffalo bills at that point. Okay. Some very intriguing options for the bills here. Now, the Bills have 28, and then they're not picking again till 60. So there's trade options, but I see some names that stand out to me here. So Jerjan Newton, again, ranked eighth by PFF. PFF loves this guy, but he's going late first round. So this would be a fine spot to pick Newton, and the Bills could use an interior defensive lineman for sure at this point. Tyler Newbin is the best safety in the draft out of Minnesota. Obviously, a great positional fit for the Bills. This is just a little bit too high. Safety is not a high leverage position. Typically speaking, I, I would be surprised to see a safety go first round in this year's draft. Never say never, but I think Newbin is a bit of a reach at this point. I know I said off the top that the Bills don't need to solve their receiver problem in the first round here, but Adonai Mitchell out of Texas is a big boy. 6'4", shades of T. Higgins. He's a guy that can make contested catches on the outside. Someone that can come in right away and be a legitimate threat to uh, for Josh Allen. Now, he does have his issues. Sometimes doesn't use the size all that well. But we're late third round, first round here. In a draft that is known for its wide receivers, it's going to be really hard to pass on Adonai Mitchell here. Really hard to pass. Uh, in terms of the trade options, if we go back, a like 34 is too much. 34, he would certainly be off the board at this point. Kind of just falling in love with the fit here for the Bills and having this available to them. So they are going to address wide receiver. I'm going to address wide receiver. Adonai Mitchell is the guy that's going to win on the outside for them out of Texas. He's the first round pick for Buffalo here. Before we get into our next selection here, if you're looking to bet on the NFL draft or the NFL or anything for that matter, Pinnacle should be your sportsbook of choice. Find out what pro bettors have known for the past 25 years. Pinnacle is where the best bettors play. You must be 19 plus, not available in the US. And as always, please play responsibly. All right, we're here at pick number 60. Jatavian Sanders, the best player available on the board. The Bills aren't going tight end. Uh, I'm not going tight end for the Bills after Dalton Kincaid. Oh, Keon Coleman is here. And Jalen Polk is here. Okay, so this is really interesting. Uh, let's just scroll a little bit further down the list to take a look of any hidden gems. Jaden Hicks is a good safety, but 60 would be a little bit too high for him. Chris Jenkins certainly could go in this range. <laughs> It's funny, I came into this draft saying the Bills don't necessarily need to address receiver. I'm very likely looking at going 
two receivers with the first two picks with the Bills right now. And listen, I know the Bills have a lot of other needs. They could use a tackle. They could use anything in the front seven on defense. But we had someone fall to us, 6'4 receiver, contested catch in the first round. I don't want to say fall to us, but a decent value. Keon Coleman is another guy, 6'4, big dude, uh, can go up, can make contested catches. Jalen Polk's a little bit shorter, shorter, I believe, in the 6'2, 6'3 range. Yeah, 6'2, 204, but also another go up and get it, contested catch type of guy. I actually just love the idea of two rookies starting on the outside for the Buffalo Bills and then mixing Khalil Shakir and Curtis Samuel in as slot receivers or in, in four wide receiver sets. And I think that just totally changes the offense and the uh, talk about the Buffalo Bills going into next year. People forget how good Buffalo's been over the course of the past four or five seasons. Uh, if they can have their offense consistently putting up good production, doesn't really matter if their defense is all that average. And Keon Coleman for me is the guy that I think will get drafted mid second round. He's available here late second round. So I'm going to do something that I didn't think was even remotely possible when I started this draft, but we're going wide receivers for the first two picks for the bills. Keon Coleman out of Florida state. All right. We're here at the end of the draft. PFF giving us a grade of an a uh, Mitchell gets the a minus. Now Jerzan Newton was available at that spot. That's debatable. And had I known Keon Coleman would still be on the board at 60, maybe I don't make the Adonai Mitchell pick. But honestly, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm happy with this. I'm happy with this draft. The Bills get their receivers. They don't have to give up assets for T. Higgins uh, or even more for Brandon Ayuk. They don't have to settle for a DJ Chark as like just a serviceable option on the outside. Two options. Hopefully one is a big hit for them. I mean, hopefully both are, but hopefully at least one is. And ultimately, I think this puts Buffalo right back in contention on offense and one of the best best offenses in the entire league. So if you're a Bills fan, let me know how you think I did below. You think I messed up? Would you have done something differently? Are you addressing wide receiver? Let me know in the comments down below. Make sure you do smash that like button if you did enjoy the video. And for more mock drafts here on Forward Progress, make sure you're subscribed to our channels. We got a ton dropping from now until NFL draft day here on the channel. Thank you for tuning in here to the Buffalo Bills mock draft on On the Clock.